Genshin Impact is a wondrous game with an ever-growing world and stylish art design is able to capture the imagination of players. Whether you enjoy the world, story or gameplay, one aspect that keeps players coming back are the amazing characters. So I'm Darkblade with a character guide to the Wanderer in Genshin Impact. In this guide we will briefly cover the basic lore of the character, their moves, abilities, weapon options, stat priorities and artifact builds. Remember though that these builds and guides are aimed at free to play and low spender players. So the guides will feature the characters as if they were constellations level 0 with 4 star weaponry, however there may be one or two exceptions. Now Wanderer is a 5 star character who wields a catalyst and has an animo vision. But in order to get him you have to wish for him on limited time banners. The Wanderer is a complex character. With a deep and dark background, it would be hard to briefly cover everything that has happened to him. He was not always known as the Wanderer. The Traveller first met him when he was under the name Scaramouche, the sixth ranking harbinger of the Fatui. During his time as a harbinger, he did countless atrocities that some could deem unforgivable. But thanks to his actions in Sumeru, he lost his memory. But with the help of Nahida, the Dendro Archon, he was able to gain his lost memories and embrace the past life that he had before he became Scaramouche whilst destroying the anthropomorphic form of his lost evil desires. Doing this gave him the resolve necessary to receive a vision ultimately destroying the evil side of his past. Thanks to Nahida and the Traveller he pledges his life to both of them and now assists them in pursuing the same old faction he used to be a part of, the Fatui. That being said he still maintains a stormy personality which some can find abrasive but he is nonetheless dedicated to Nahida and the Traveller. Now every character in Genshin Impact has access to various talents. These are divided into combat talents and passive talents. Combat talents are the moves and abilities that you use whilst in combat, whilst passive talents are mechanics that work in the background of the character. When it comes to the Wanderer, his first combat talent is his normal attacks, Yuban Maigen. By pressing the attack button, Wanderer will unleash a free hit combo using wind blades to deal animo damage to opponents, with the last attack unleashing two wind blades. You can also hold down the attack button to perform a charge attack which consumes a small amount of stamina to unleash a AoE of animo damage directly ahead of him. He also has access to a plunging attack which is done by pressing the attack button whilst in mid air which will cause him to plummet towards the ground damaging foes in an AoE around the impact zone. This damage is also classed as animo damage. The next combat talent and Wanderer's elemental skill is Hanaga, Song of the Wind. When activated, the Wanderer uses the power of the wind to lift himself into the air, dealing AoE animo damage to opponents around him. He will then stay in the air in a state known as the wind favoured state. This basically allows him to fly for a short period of time. Whilst in the wind favoured state, you cannot perform plunging attacks, but you can use normal and charged attacks that will lock onto enemies around you. Normal attacks are known as Kugo Fushudan, whilst charged attacks are known as Kugo Tofukai attacks. Additionally, whilst airborne, these charged attacks will not actually consume stamina. Now whilst airborne, you won't have a stamina bar. Instead, it will be replaced by Kugo Ryoku points. This is like a little blue stamina bar next to the Wanderer. Whilst airborne, this will slowly deplete. Whilst you sprint whilst airborne, this will also make it deplete to which when you finally run out, you'll drop to the ground. A few extra side notes though for the Song of Wind is that should you press the jump button whilst you are airborne, you will rise higher into the air, but will again consume Hyoko Ryuku points in doing so. Finally, you can also activate your elemental skill a second time whilst you are already airborne to deactivate it if you so wish. Ultimately, this is a very unique elemental skill. It is fun to use, fun to traverse the world with, and is one of the most outstanding features for the Wanderer. Anyway, his next combat talent is his elemental burst known as the Kyugen Five Ceremental Plays. When activated, the Wanderer compresses the atmosphere into a singular vacuum that deals multiple hits to opponents in an AoE of animo damage. If the Wanderer is in the wind favored state, when you activate your elemental burst though, it will end it after casting it. So the elemental burst for the Wanderer is a hard hitting move, although it does hit five times, and is a great way to finish off combos at the end of your win favoured state. Anyway, let's move on to the passive talents. First of all is the Jade Claimed Flower, a very powerful passive talent for the Wanderer. When activating your elemental skill, should it come into contact with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo or Electro elements, the win favoured state will receive one of four buffs. If it comes into Hydro, the Kugo Ryoko point cap is increased by 20, so you'll have more airborne stamina. If it comes into contact with Pyro, your attack will be increased by 30%. If it comes into contact with Cryo, you'll gain a 20% crit rate. And if it comes into contact with Electro, when your normal and charged attacks hit an opponent, energy will be restored every 0.2 seconds. You can have two kinds of these buffs active at any one point as well. 
making teams that feature these elements alongside the Wanderer very useful and impactful. The next passive talent is Gales of Reverie. When the Wanderer hits an opponent with Kugo Fushudan or Kugu Tofukai, whilst his elemental skill is active, he has a 16% chance to obtain the Descent effect, which is a buff that activates on the Wanderer. The next time the Wanderer accelerates, so sprints whilst in mid-air, the effect will be removed and in doing so, you'll not consume any airborne stamina and you will also fire off 4 wind arrows that deal 35% of Wanderer's attack as animo damage. For each normal or charged attack that does not produce this buff, the follow-up attacks will have an increased 12% chance of triggering it. You can tell when the buff is active by a shining blue light activating on the Wanderer. Finally for the passive talents is Strum the Swirling Winds which is a crafting passive talent that reduces the amount of Mora it costs to ascend bows and catalysts. Now let's quickly move on to talk about the constellations. Now I won't spend too much time here as, like I said at the start of the video, these guides are aimed at constellation level 0 characters. However, if you're able to get constellations level 1, 2, 4 or 6 for the Wanderer, you will see a noticeable increase in your damage. Constellation level 1 basically increases your attack speed of your attacks while you're airborne, as well as increase the damage of the Gales of Reverie arrows. Constellation level 2 sees an increase of damage to your elemental burst, depending on how much airborne stamina you have left. The less you have, the more damage it will deal. Constellation level 4 allows you to gain more buffs when casting your elemental skill and interacting with different elements. And Constellation level 6 gives the Wanderer 2 buffs whenever he's casting his normal attacks whilst in the wind favour state. Additional instances of that normal attack will hit the position that you hit dealing 40% of the attack's original damage. Additionally, when your airborne stamina points fall below a certain threshold, a certain amount will be restored, allowing you to stay airborne for longer periods. Like I said, all of these will help increase the Wanderer's damage if you're lucky enough to get them. But let's move on to the next section where we talk about the builds that I like to use for the Wanderer. Now the Wanderer and his kit are all aimed at being a DPS, a main DPS or even hyper carry. He can be spec to be a sort of pseudo support DPS if he wanted to, but for the most part I use him as a main DPS. So the first build I like to use for him is simply called that, the main DPS build. But for a more colourful name, I refer to it as the Desert Pavilion build. This build is all about increasing his damage capabilities over everything else. So first of all for the weapons, of course 5 star weaponry is going to be the absolute best for the Wanderer. But for 4 star options, I'd first recommend the Witsith. This gives you crit damage and when switching to the Wanderer, he'll gain a random buff for 10 seconds of either increased attack, increased elemental damage or increased elemental mastery. Failing that, the Solar Pearl is also a good option if you have Battle Pass which gives you crit rate, and on top of that, normal attacks when they hit an opponent increase your elemental skill damage and elemental burst damage, and likewise elemental skill and burst damage will also increase your normal attacks for 6 seconds. Failing that, the craftable map of Mare is also okay, which gives us elemental mastery, and when we trigger an elemental reaction, which happens a lot with the animo element and its swirl elemental reactions, we'll gain an increased elemental damage bonus as well, that can stack up to 2 times. Failing to get any of these though, you can also make use of the Twin Nephrite, which gives us increased crit rate, and defeating an opponent increases our movement speed and attack by a percentage for 15 seconds. But it has a lower base attack than the 4 star weaponry, so I would only advise going for this if you have nothing else. Now as for the artifacts, as we're focusing on increasing the Wanderer's damage as much as possible, I recommend for going for 4 pieces of the Desert Pavilion Chronicle set. For wearing two pieces of this artifact set, you'll gain an animo damage increase of 15%, and for wearing four pieces, when a charged attack hits an opponent's, the equipping character's normal attack speed will be increased, whilst at the same time, further normal charged and plunging damage will be increased by 40% as well for 15 seconds. This set enhances the Wanderer's own damage capabilities and is built around his playstyle. As for the stats on the artifacts, for your sand you'll want to go for attack percentage, for your goblet you want to go for animo damage bonus, although attack percentage is a nice backup, and then for your circlet you want to go for crit rate or crit damage. As for the substats, crit rate and crit damage are king, followed by attack percentage and then the other stats. As for your talents, you want to focus on your normal attacks first, followed by your elemental skill and then your elemental burst, but with the wanderer, to be honest, all of his combat talents are important and shouldn't be neglected. But there is another build that I like to use for the Wanderer. Again, it's a main DPS build, but it's more team focused. So I would call it the team focused DPS build. But again, for a more colorful build, I refer to it as the Viridescent build. 
This build again sees Wanderer as a main DPS, but allows the Wanderer to not only deal massive damage himself, but also increase the damage of our elemental reactions and the entire party. Whilst his individual damage may drop with the right team, this can be a powerful build. So, for the weaponry, again, you want to go for either the Witsif, Solar Pearl, Mapa Mare, or the Twin Nephrite if you want a 3 star option. And then for your artifacts, you're going to go for 4 pieces of the Viridescence Venera set. For wearing 2 pieces of this artifact set, you'll gain a 15% increase to your Animo damage. And for wearing 4 pieces of this artifact set, you'll increase your Swirl damage by 60%, and you'll also decrease an opponent's elemental resistance to the element that is infused with the Swirl by 40% for 10 seconds. As for the stats, when it comes to your sand, you'll either want to go for attack percentage or elemental mastery. As for your goblet, you'll want to go for animo damage bonus or attack percentage again. And then for your circlet, once more, crit rate and crit damage. When it comes to your substats, crit rate and crit damage are still king, followed by attack percentage and then elemental mastery. As for your talent priorities, much like the first build, your normal attacks are your first priority, followed by your elemental skill, then your elemental burst. But, like I said before, you don't want to neglect any one specific talent with the Wanderer. So, as you can see with this build with the Viridescent Fenrir set, your team's elemental reactions are going to be a lot stronger. But you have to make sure that you use party members whose elements are compatible with the Swirl elemental reaction to get the most out of this build. Of course there are other builds out there. For example, if you want builds that focus purely on the Wanderer's damage output, the Shimanawa set as well as the Gladiator's Finale set are quite good. Or you could even go for two pieces of the Desert Pavilion Chronicle set combined with two pieces of the Viridescent Svenrir set for a pure Animo damage increase. So there's lots to play around with. These are just the two builds that I personally like to use with the Wanderer. But every character out there in Genshin Impact has various pros and cons. No character is absolutely perfect. Even 5 star characters, whilst they are powerful indeed, they do have various negatives to help balance them out. The biggest pro for the Wanderer is his damage output. Being an Animo character, he can easily create swirl reactions, increasing our damage. His normal attacks too also have a natural AoE to them and can home in on enemies. And he has a strong elemental burst to top it off. The other pro is that he can fly. Whilst this may put him at risk when it comes to ranged attacks, it means that he can easily avoid ground-based attacks and get to various vantage points while in combat. And the final pro is that he is great when it comes to exploration. Being able to fly and traverse the environment in the way he does gives him a unique advantage that other characters don't have. But of course there are cons. One of the biggest cons for the Wanderer is that he has low HP and defense. This can be alleviated though if you use shielding characters. And the final con is unfortunately he's a high investment character as you kind of need to invest in all of his talents to make him work effectively. You can't neglect one over the others if you want the optimal performance from the Wanderer. But of course in Genshin Impact every character is made better when used in the right team composition. When it comes to the Wanderer he can work in many teams. This is thanks to the Animo element synergizing well with the majority of elements out there. It works well with Cryo, Hydro, Electro, Pyro, but it's not so great with Dendro and Geo. So take this in mind when creating your team. Pyro, Cryo, Electro and Hydro characters are generally preferred when you're using the Wanderer. On top of that, you should also take into consideration characters who are able to provide the Wanderer a shield. This will help counteract his low survivability. And finally, I'd recommend using characters who have off-field elemental skills or bursts as these will persist whilst the Wanderer takes to the field, as well as the skies, to deal his Animo damage. Having those skills persisting while he's dealing damage will allow you to create swirls, dealing more damage to opponents. So overall, the Wanderer is a powerful character to use in Genshin Impact. He's also quite fun as well, with a unique playstyle and way of dealing damage. He is a little bit fragile, and to get the most out of him, he has to be in a decent team, but if you achieve that, you're going to have a character who is incredibly fun to play. Whilst his lore and story may be questionable and not the most endearing to everyone out there, Genshin Impact is an ongoing story and there's always room for a redemption arc. Just be careful as the Wanderer may not always be known as the Wanderer, so keep that in mind. So there we have it, that is my character guide and overview to the Wanderer in Genshin Impact. Now remember that there are multiple ways to play and use characters in the game, which is one of the many aspects that makes Genshin Impact so enjoyable. So at the end of the day, use the characters how you want to use them. These builds are just how I personally like to use the characters, and I hope they help you out in your adventures. So until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you a character guide to the Wanderer and Genshin Impact. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.